Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Anar and I'm a self-taught software developer. And on this channel, I help you break into and grow in the tech industry. Today, I'm going to cover the software developer interview process in Canada in detail. I have been on both sides of this process enough times, so I can definitely give you some insight. I will go into each type of software developer interview and how it fits into the software developer interview process for different types of companies. But before I get into that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you have notifications set to all so you don't miss any of my future content. The first step of the interview process is always an introductory call with the recruiter of the company. This is just a screening process where you're asked HR questions such as are you eligible to work for any employer in Canada or how much notice do you need to give to your current employer before starting a new job. Most people pass the screening stage because none of your skills are really evaluated at this point. Next, you would get invited for an on-site interview. Since we are in a pandemic right now, this is going to be a video call over Zoom or a platform like Zoom. At this point, it's very likely that you will be asked to do a technical coding interview. There are generally three categories of coding interviews. The first one is the faceless coding interview. This is when you're not actually being interviewed by anybody, but rather you receive an email from the company that you applied to stating that they want to move forward. It also says that the next step is for you to complete a technical assignment and there's usually a link with some instructions provided in the email. The link leads you to a coding exercise platform like HackerRank where you have a set amount of time to complete one or a few coding exercises. You may get this email before or after clearing the initial screening interview. What type of exercise you get largely depends on what type of job you're applying to. If it's a front-end development role, the exercise may involve things like parsing JSON or creating an AJAX request. More often than not, regardless of the type of job you're applying to, you get an algorithm question, similar to the ones you could find on HackerRank yourself. Practicing in advance on a platform like LeetCode or HackerRank will definitely help you clear this type of interview. The second type of technical coding interview you may get is actually a take-home assignment. This typically happens after you clear the initial screening interview. During the screening interview, your interviewer will explain that if you're selected for the next stage, there will be a take-home assignment, which you may have a day, a few days, or a week to complete. These types of assignments tend to be much more practical than the algorithmic style questions that you'll get in a faceless interview. It may be something like build a backend application that performs the following functions, or build a front-end application that consumes the following provided API. The type of take-home assignment you get usually depends on what type of job you're applying to. For example, if you're applying for a back-end engineer role, you likely won't be asked to come up with a beautiful visual design. One good thing about these interviews is that the interviewer usually tells you that you can email him with any questions you may have, or if you need a time extension. So this process generally feels a lot more human. To do well on these take-home assignments, you need to go the extra mile, because remember, you will be evaluated in comparison to other software developers. Aside from completing the functionality that was requested, adding unit tests, a readme, or a docker file are some things you could do to go the extra mile. This leads me to the third type of technical interview you may get, which is a pair programming interview. Pair programming interviews are typically done on a pair programming platform, where again, you're supplied with a link, but when you log in, you have yourself, your interviewer, and a code editor that you could share with the interviewer on display. You start off with an introduction, and then the interviewer gives you a problem to solve, very often an algorithm problem. The big benefit here is that you have your interviewer right there, and the interviewer actually wants you to do well. You can ask any reasonable question you have, and if you have a solution in mind, you can ask if it's a step in the right direction. If it's not, they'll let you know, and you can pivot instead of spending all your time on a solution that wouldn't be correct. If you want to prepare for this type of interview specifically, there's a free platform called Pramp. I'm going to add a link to the video description. And those are the three types of technical coding interviews that you may get. How many of each of them you get depends on the company. A startup or a big non-technology company like Walmart may just have one technical coding interview. A big technology company like Amazon or Google may have three, four or five technical coding interviews. The reason behind this is that these big tech giants are very desirable to work for and they have a lot more applicants to go through, so they use these extra interviews as a way to filter through applicants. A little side note, you may get multiple coding interviews in one day. Like for example, you may get three one-hour coding interviews in a three-hour session. Aside from these technical coding interviews, you may also get a system design interview. These interviews always happen after the coding interviews 
and they're typically more knowledge-based. Questions regarding microservices, database design, and scalability are often asked. You may be given a problem, like how would you build an application that has a certain set of features and has a certain amount of users accessing these features across a certain amount of time. Like for example, 100 users a minute creating shortened URL links. How would you build a system that scales? There may be a whiteboard where you can draw out your design and explain your reasoning. Again, a big benefit here is that you have interviewers who you can ask questions. And it's better to ask questions frequently than to go deeper and deeper into an incorrect solution. The final interview is usually completely non-technical. It's like a taste of what your first day would be like. You get to meet the team and talk about your interests and your work. At this point, usually as long as you don't say something that offends somebody or rubs somebody the wrong way, you're okay. I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section and don't forget to like the video. That'll be it for today. I'll see you in the next one.